Fallout New Vegas has a lot of weapons in it. For most of those weapons, you can find some situation where they're going to be useful, but there are some weapons that you were never meant to touch in the first place. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only Misfortune's Bad Luck Bringer? No, you can't. The Bad Luck Bringer is a weapon used exclusively by Misfortune on the rare occasion she spawns in to lend a hand after you attack something in VATS while having the Misfortune perk, which you can't get until level 10. But her gun is really cool and I want it, so I'm gonna spawn it in and have a field day with it. Despite the incredibly unique attributes this weapon has, it's still a gun, so the special stats are based around maxing out agility to get a nice head start in the gun skill. Intelligence for experience points, luck for both the casinos and additional points across all skills. Charisma is a dump as always, and the rest are spread out evenly. Skills were guns, lock, pick, and sneak. No speech because I'm not a little b unless I want to be or am on accident. My traits were skilled, you already know why, and trigger discipline. In retrospect, that last trait, which increases accuracy by 20% while decreasing fire rate by 20%, was a massive mistake. Then came the cheating. Ah, oh, the cheating. My favorite part of every children's activity book. I took it upon myself to do a big cheat this time. On top of giving myself the bad luck bringer, its full name is Misfortune's Bad Luck Bringer, but that's a f***ing mouthful. I also gave myself 1544 Magnum Rounds. Sure, I could have ran all the way out to the Gunrunners, sold the items I got from the DLC packs for some 44 ammo, and instant transmissioned myself back to Good Springs. But I didn't do that. Instead, I dropped the most valuable weapons and armor I got from previously mentioned DLC packs, worth about 2800 caps in total, in exchange for 15 bullets. I'm pretty good at the whole bartering thing. I knew this was a 100% fair trade. Oh, to make this feel more realistic, I also gave myself Misfortune's outfit and hat, which I'd use as my only armor throughout the game. And at last, after drifting out at sea for so very long, our nasally hero finds himself washed up on Real Game Island. I'm gonna put up a screenshot of everything the Bad Luck Bringer does for 5 seconds, so pause the video if you want to read the whole thing, but I'm still gonna summarize it anyway. To summarize it quickly, every time you attack something, a fortune value is randomly determined. Depending on the score, one of a few things can happen. It can knock them down for 10 seconds, detonate an explosive that's in their inventory, which can also be triggered by plasma-based weaponry, a grenade launcher, or incinerators, or it can shatter any of their limbs. As you've seen by me attacking Chet as a test, the damage output is horrible, but it's a hell of a weird gun. Not as weird as the objects in the cabinet just floating there, but that's beyond my purview. Speaking of things not being there, the mods weren't there anymore after the game crashed and I removed them all. Despite what I said earlier about the gun runners, they were still my main destination for the current moment. I wanted all the ammo in the world. I did stop to test out my toy on a deathclaw, and it amazingly worked better than expected. It knocked the bitch out. Things got a little bland as I got closer to the strip. Not sure what that's about. Maybe it was the game attempting to match the hug color, because everyone knows green is the correct hug color for New Vegas. Anyone who says otherwise needs immediate psychiatric help. At the Gunrunners, I bought 24 regular bullets, 28 hollow points, and 60 bullets that have to wear a helmet. From there, it was back to Good Springs to drop shot a few bottles, speak to the townsfolk about the upcoming battle, and let the games begin. On my way to see Ringo, I realized something awful. Despite this being a 44 revolver, you can only use standard bullets with it. No hollow points or specials work. I even tried spending all my bullets on Ringo to see if running out of ammo would make the other bullets automatically be loaded, but they didn't. Then I reloaded a save to rip Ringo back from the loving arms of Mother Death and took the fight to the Powder Gangers. Even on easy, I got my ass handed to me. I actually died, which isn't supposed to happen. Once I'd punted the difficulty back down to very easy, the battle went smoother than expected. From there, I knew what I had to do. I still needed ammo. I didn't want to be pussyfooting around like some drunk toddler who's saving his bullets for his father. As far as I know, there are no convenient exploits that can get you absurd amounts of ammo in very little time. But there is a method to be used here. Step 1. Travel to 188 Trading Post to buy some bullets from the Gunrunner, then head to Prim to buy more from Mr. Nash. An unfortunate thing happened there. 
The inhabitants were not fans of me stealing their stuff so brazenly. As I fired into the crowd of people, I noticed that the bad luck bringer can send multiple people flying if they're huddled together. In the process of knocking them on their asses, they drop their weapons, which is wonderful because then it's you with a gun against people who can only throw hands. But their bodies can get a little weird when they go all flaccid. It took more than half my ammo to end them all, except for Fisto's cousin. I left him alive so he could live with the pain of knowing he couldn't protect anyone. And because he didn't attack me, I'm not gonna kill something that can't fight back. Not again. The one bad thing about ripping the guns out of their hands is that they break when they hit the floor. Also, um, hmm, what's the politically correct way to say this? I shot a kid. I sent that little b to the moon. And for the briefest of moments, I thought I'd killed him. Then, just for shits and giggles, I added some dynamite to his inventory and made him explode. It hurt me more than it hurt him. I stopped by a casino to gamble my way to success. No reason to spend too much time talking about it. I gambled until I had me about 11,000 chips, which I then converted into caps through the power of photosynthesis and got to work on my plan. All I did was go back and forth between the gun runners, the Mick and Ralph guy who sells ammo, and the little idiot at 188 Trading Post then wait for several days for them all to restock, then do it again. Took quite a long time, wasn't very fun to do, spent about 7800 caps in the process, but I eventually built my way up to a thousand rounds of 44 bullets, and the real game could finally begin. Eager to see this thing in real action, I entered the hotel in Prim to do what us gamers refer to as a terrorist attack. It was pretty interesting. I even seemed to kill Sonic at one point. This flame kept running across the floor, but it was so quick that I couldn't make out exactly who it was. At level 4, I took the Black Widow perk to have some fun with a certain gentleman later on, continued my rampage through the hotel, discovered that repairing a broken gun with a few other broken guns gives you a gun that barely works. Science truly is amazing, and returned to the casino to see about getting some law and order in Prim. The only people left alive are Beagle and the robot, but the town really needs a sheriff. Don't want things to get out of hand. Turns out that by accidentally killing everyone, the quest can't be completed. And if we can't keep things civilized, there's no reason for anyone to be left alive. But it was all worth it. I had fun blasting Prim Slim all over the building. I then set off for Boulder City to bother someone else. I wanted to see how far away you can be and still trigger the crybaby who lost his brother in the war. You can do it from pretty far away and he never stops coming after you. He's like an immortal snail that's hell-bent on ending your life. Or Victor, trying to say howdy. You can run, but you can't hide. In my desperate attempt to evade him, I had another idea for a challenge. A simpler one. Go to the memorial, piss off the loser, and beat the game without him talking to you. Someone who isn't me should do that. I was hoping to get him to follow me into the Great Khan's hideout inside the city to see if something funny would happen, like someone getting killed. Didn't happen, so I resorted to my own form of violence. And let me tell you, the Great Khans are some tough motherfuckers. Took about 25 shots to kill the two of them. Then I blew my own mind by falling for the lie I just told. Private Kowalski followed me inside but didn't come to my aid when the bullets started flying and my life was nearly drained from my body. Well, he might have. I was too busy cowering in fear to see what was going on. With a destination ingrained in my brain like scar tissue, I set off for the tops to finally deal with Benny. I let him f*** me. Then, uh, I really had no idea what to do. For some reason, I assumed Benny was going to leave the platinum chip behind, because I usually do get paid for this sort of thing. So I went ahead and spoke to the big man in the sky to see what words of wisdom he had for me. He set me on a course, the fort. I'd get there eventually, I just had a few other things to take care of first. See, the NCR has invited me to the embassy for a surprise birthday party. My present was manual labor in the form of dealing with the boomers. A few Brahmin looked at me funny so I sent them to the big cattle farm in the sky, blew off one of George's legs, immediately got bombarded by karma, and spoke to Pearl about how to help. My first task was to put on my rubber mittens and perform surgery. Dr. Paul knows all about the medicine. A couple months ago I accidentally cut a and had to clean up all the blood. It was a traumatizing experience. The next stop in my quest to drown the world in bad luck took me off the beaten path to rough up some insects. They died beautifully, almost as beautiful as when I stomped on all their babies. At some point, I listened to a children ramble on about history, which allowed me to finally set sail for adventure and swim down to the bottom of a lake to raise a plane like Lazarus. With the pearl and the boomers under my belt, I returned to the strip told the crock of what I'd done, and went to find a way to shut down the kings. I really didn't feel like doing their questline, 
Luckily for me, drugs are going to save the day once again. In the old Mort Fort, I learned that our friend Pacer is allergic to Psycho. All it takes is one little dose safely lodged inside his inhaler, and he's as good as dead. I did the right thing. The Christian thing to do, really. Who knows how unpleasant his death was, but if nothing else, he had a clear nose as he passed on into the next life. And that's a luxury not all of us get. As I continued to trick the NCR into thinking I was on their side, I was ordered to report to Hoover Dam for a new mission. Exterminate the Great Cons. Ammo is now something that effectively doesn't matter. The Quartermaster sells bullets by the hundreds. I had to take the long way to Red Rock Canyon. Well, I didn't have to, and having a gun that knocks out anything it touches probably would have been a good tool against the giant feral butterflies, but I'm a man after my own heart. I'll inconvenience myself, waste time, and annoy myself for no other reason than the fact that I can. I went ahead and took out Cook Cook as I got closer to Red Rock. He exploded real good, and I sent a bunch of bitches flying when I stormed into Violet's compound to exterminate her and her puppies. There were snouts and tails and teeth and legs all over the place, by the time I was done with them. Violet even did a flip. It was great. So great, in fact, that it crashed the game. Not wanting to go through that again, but still wanting to kill something, I took my frustrations out on a horde of big corners. They were the pins, I was the ball, and I got strike after strike after strike. I even got some wacky animations, just like you would in a real bowling alley. But wait, there's more. The killing doesn't stop there. Because I entered Papa Khan's house and got to work, ending all their lives. It took a lot longer than you'd think this sort of thing should, but confined spaces are where this weapon really shines. You're effectively God, but being God doesn't stop with the effects of the gun. It extends to the very weapon itself as well as your armor. Because you are not supposed to have this weapon or the armor, it does not degrade. You don't have to repair it or maintain it or anything. Back in the strip, I was told to infiltrate the Ormerta crime family family and destroy them from the inside out. All it took was a little bit of dirt and I was able to use Kachino like my own personal hand puppet. The Omertas were up to something nefarious. Some real f***ed up shit. I don't recall exactly what it was. Had something to do with boxes I think. Maybe trying to disrupt the cardboard box industry. Who knows. What's important is that I put a stop to them. First, I stole their guns. Then I blew up their boxes. That pissed them off. They thought they were gonna bring me and my puppet down. But Kachino's tough. He don't die easy. I'm so indifferent towards death that I just sat on the couch and ate every bullet the boss man tossed towards me. I'm not sure what happened to Kachino. I never found his body. Some people say he never even existed in the first place. But my job there was done, and only a couple hundred more people had to die before I declared my slaughter a success. As unfortunate as it is, democracy comes at a cost. Mr. House had to go. But there's a problem. See, I don't have the platinum chip. And I kinda sorta just pissed off the entirety of Caesar's Legion. Getting that chip back was not going to be easy. I could have easily reloaded a save to right before I became their most wanted target and waltzed into the fort like I was sent by God to be Caesar's new footstool. Now, too easy. I took the long, aquatic path towards Cottonwood Cove. Didn't want to cause more of a scene than I had to. Unfortunately for me, the Legion lads are a good bit tougher than anything I've faced so far. I arrived at the fort with 1,485 bullets, and by the time I dealt with the guys at the front gate, just them, nobody else, it was like 7 guys, I was down to 1,350. They were not a pushover. I mean, I pushed them over a lot, but they had spirit. They had backbone, except for when their backbone rolled out of their body as their limbs turned into limp spaghetti noodles. But you get what I'm trying to say. I ignored most of the others on my way to Caesar's tent. I f***ed with a few of them, but not too much. Now Caesar's tent, that was quite a place. Real awful, real, real terrible. Just a bad experience overall. Silver linings and whatnot, it's a confined space, which as I've said, is where the gun comes alive. You may not believe me when I say this, but these few Praetorian guards were quite possibly the hardest to kill creatures I've ever faced in a challenge. It took nearly 400 shots to kill them all. It took almost 10 minutes of constant shooting to end their lives, even after discovering that I could sit in a corner and blow them all away, before they had a chance to get near me, even when I was reloading. It still took so f***ing long, and after it was all said and done, I couldn't remember where I'd gotten the platinum chip, whose body it came from or when I got it. I went so far as to reload a save, to make sure I didn't have it all along, which I didn't, so this wasn't a complete waste of time. After that unpleasantness, killing a wrinkled old man was like stealing candy from a corpse. Then came something even easier, destroying the Brotherhood of Steel. I could have killed them, maybe. If I hadn't exhausted myself laying waste to the Legion's upper management, I might have attempted it. Instead, I didn't. 
I used a worthless tool to open the door, bought some stim packs for the upcoming war, lifted the three key cards out of the pockets of those stupid enough to let me in, activated the failsafe, turned the key, ended them all, returned to the Hoover Dam, and readied myself to protect the president. Protecting people isn't really my thing. I remembered that there's a sniper guy up in one of the towers who had nothing good planned for the president. I just kinda loitered around for a bit, doing next to nothing, until I got this feeling deep inside that something bad was about to happen. Might have been my liver crying for help, but I assumed it wasn't, executed the terrorist atop the tower, saved the president, his vertebrae blew up. But it wasn't my fault because like I've said, I've been tricking the NCR this entire time, with the remains of the president scattered all over the dam. The time had come for the end of the line, the second battle of Hoover Dam. The battle in the inwards of the dam was alright, I guess. My general tactic was to knock the Legion soldiers on their asses, to get rid of their weapons so my comrades could attack them with their real weapons that actually hurt people. Unfortunately, the NCR troopers sometimes got in my way and got flogged alongside the enemy. Then again, if they're stupid enough to get in my way, they might as well be my enemy. Outside, atop the dam, I surprisingly used that same tactic. Though because we're out in the open and, you know, several stories above the ground, I could occasionally send a centurion over the edge to their demise. The second half of the push through the dam went better than expected. The NCR the R Rangers pulled their weight, and I only accidentally killed a few of them. Now the Legates camp was not great. I was pretty annoyed that none of the Rangers followed me inside, so I had to do all the work myself, something I'm not used to. I wouldn't describe the first bit as hard, just time consuming as f***. Psycho and Medex did help, but only a little. Psycho might make you do 25% more damage, but going from 10 damage per shot to 12 and some change is effectively worthless. It wasn't long before I decided to just face the entirety of the Legate's forces all at once. My initial shot on the Legate burst him into flame and knocked him on his ass. The next few shots did big damage to the two rangers who'd come to my aid. Amazingly, I was able to knock the sword out of the Legate's big meaty claws, but I think it annoyed the guards because they were f***ing relentless, and some spineless slime ball was shooting me from somewhere I couldn't see. Soon enough though, I got myself into a corner that provided me with a good amount of safety. Guys run towards me, I knock them off the cliff, rinse and repeat for hundreds of rounds. Then I turn the legget into a firework and got a home run with someone's body. This was definitely one of the more interesting bouts against Lanius. This was probably the most costly confrontation from a standpoint of bullets. When the war began, I had about 1200, and by the time General Oliver arrived to congratulate me on a job well done, I'd chewed through more than half of my total supply of bullets. But it was all worth it, because I beat Fallout New Vegas with only Misfortune's bad luck bringer. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.